Brock Lesnar and Matt Riddle had a backstage altercation at the 2020 Royal Rumble, the real reason for Sting's last ever AEW match, and a top WWE star getting a new gimmick. I'm Ollie Davis, and this is the Wrestle Talk News. Support Wrestle Talk! Much like your basic cousin on Instagram who's still making New Year, New Me posts. I don't care how much cryptocurrency you've bought, Ian, and I've asked around. No one's even heard of Token Coin. I think you're being scammed. Matt Riddle has started 2024 with New Year, New Post WW Me. Following his WWE release in September, he made his MLW debut at January 6th Kings of Coliseum show, defeating Jacob Fatu, and a vignette played for him at New Year's Dash, announcing his New Japan debut on the 13th of January's Battle in the Valley. He'll then be entering a program with the promotion's president, Hiroshi Tanahashi, for his TV title at New Beginning in Sapporo. But just like Ian, and that time he blew Grandad's inheritance on Bored Apes NFTs, conversation is dominated by what Riddle could have made of himself in the past. Because it's time for our new segment, Times Matt Riddle Didn't Win Stuff, according to Matt Riddle. During a virtual sign and appearance for Signed by Superstars, Riddle revealed how he was supposed to win the terrible 2022 Men's Royal Rumble match. And he would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for that pesky Brock Lesnar. Riddle claims he was told that I was going to win the Rumble and everything else. But because the Beast Incarnate had already lost to Bobby Lashley in a singles match earlier that night, the number 30 entrant Lesnar just decided he was going to win instead. Brock came in, didn't want to do business with everybody, said he was winning, and then he won. Like, none of the producers, nobody, stood up to him, and they let him do it. I didn't either. A report from PW Insider at the time seemingly corroborates this, who wrote Riddle was a frontrunner to win the match until a late change. Autumn was also considered to win at 1.2. Just as a reminder, this was the Rumble booked by Shane McMahon. A creative failure so bad, Shane screwed up his own entrance return, threw a strop backstage, and was then reportedly fired from his own dad's company the following week. Dave Meltzer has disputed Riddle's version of events on Wrestling Observer Radio, reporting WWE officials have denied he was ever seriously considered to win any Royal Rumble match ever. While some were fans of his backstage, he also had many enemies, which Riddle had made with his frequent controversies and outspoken comments against the likes of Lesnar and Goldberg. There was another report at the time that claimed Lesnar had been scheduled to win the 2022 Rumble for weeks in advance. But that's not the only time Riddle and Lesnar have found their fates entwining backstage. The two encountered each other several years beforehand at the 2020 Royal Rumble. Not yet a match Riddle has claimed he was going to win. At the time, Pro Wrestling Sheet, remember, them reported Lesnar and Riddle were involved in a verbal backstage altercation before the event. Details are scarce at this time, but sources tell us Lesnar and Riddle passed each other while walking backstage and the tense encounter ensued. One source says Brock saw Matt and wanted him to know the reality of the situation between them. TalkSport then reported exactly what Lesnar told Riddle in the interaction. Kid, you might as well stop saying my name and tagging me because you and I will never work together, ever. Lesnar is thought to be referring to many public interviews and tweets Riddle have made, calling out Lesnar, criticizing his work rate, and saying he should be the one to retire him. Pro Wrestling Sheet finished their report saying, we do know things did not get physical between the two. About five months later, Riddle confirmed as much in an interview to Ariel Hawani. Let's just say he came up to me with a security guard. Not that he needed the security guard. He came up to me, put his arm around me, and told me we were never going to work. So I shouldn't mention his name or talk about him or anything like that. And I should not call him out on social media. And I said, Whatever you want, bro. Perhaps Brock also made his feelings clear to WWE management, as despite getting somewhat of a push at the time, Riddle entered the Rumble match at number 23 and was really quickly eliminated by Baron Corbin. But now, Riddle has spoken more about that interaction in his Signed by Superstars interview, revealing that faux-friendly arm around the shoulder was actually a likely terrifying Lesnar grabbing him by the back of the neck. So uh, I'm at Royal Rumble. My first time on the main roster, I'm super stoked, and I see Brock Lesnar, and he walks next to me. And I'm like, 
what's up, dude? You know, like, hey. And then all of a sudden, his security guard, who I'm good friends with now, came up behind us. He goes, you need help with this? And I'm like, what? And then Brock grabs me by the neck. And he didn't, like, drag me, but he... he he right. grabbed me by the neck and then proceeded to tell me we would never work together and they keep my effing mouth shut. Said to have one of the best wrestling business minds around, it's actually out of character for Brock to not put his feelings to one side to work a program with Riddle. Perhaps he just thought him versus Riddle wouldn't make him enough money. Why do you think Riddle rubbed Lesnar up the wrong way so much? Let me know in the comments and I'll be replying to people. from out of nowhere. While you make those comments down below, be nice to each other. Here's a clip from the brand new survival series where we had to name every Royal Rumble entry ever. It's so much harder than that sounds. It look with the green and the blue, I feel like I'm in Star Wars. Go watch that on PFK right after I'm done telling you about The Young Bucks' awesome moustaches! <laughs> the AEW Dynamite Homecoming special ended finally revealing who Sting's last ever match will be against. Not Darby Allen, not Ric Flair, thank God, not Baron Corbin. Sting will go out facing the Young Bucks. The tease was first met with confusion. The Bucks are fantastic tag wrestlers and are probably the right choice to get the best possible in-ring match for Sting's retirement. But it does lack any storyline or historic motivation. So enter Fightful Select with the real reason. It's Sting! Yeah. Sting reportedly has a lot to say in deciding who his final opponent or opponents will be. If only all former Main Event Mafia members were so lucky, he's keen to do more tag matches than singles as he's limited in what he can do by himself. So it appears Sting has chosen the Bucks as his final match. Giving Sting a proper retirement is said to be a high priority for AEW President Tony Khan, which includes getting Ric Flair in his corner for his final run. Flair is reportedly not currently considered for any physical spots, but he's been actively pushing to do them. As for shadowed by their heel tantrums last November, the Bucks are reportedly changing their gimmick from their previous elite babyface act. It's been rumoured they'll be joined by Brandon Cutler and Colt Cabana in a new faction. And they're not the only wrestling act getting re-gimmicked. WrestleVotes is reporting there were plans in place to name the Bobby Lashley Street Profits faction on last week's SmackDown, which got axed at the last second for unknown reasons. I'm told those plans are still tentative as the direction of the trio could be shifting. The plan name for the group is The Pride, a report Montez Ford has reacted to by tagging Lashley and Angelo Dawkins in a picture of three lions. Aww. The change in plans that stop them finally getting a name could be the debut of another faction, Carrion Cross and AOP, who attack them on the episode. Now go watch us name every Royal Rumble entrant ever on Survival Series.